There's pretty kitty doing what she likes to do. She's doing her garden work. And it's starting to get chilly, so. Oh, she's reaching in. <laughs> I think you missed it, pretty kitty. Yep, I think it's gone. Poor baby. <laughs> so funny. This is a good place to start. I've already watered. See the tomatoes are still looking okay. I'm not too sure what the corn is doing but hey it's doing it. I don't see any little peas yet. I guess I shouldn't because it hasn't quite been even seven days. But I do see a few little radishes. Still really little. Pretty Kitty's checking them out, too. <laughs> this is the Swiss chard. This is last year's Swiss chard. We didn't plant it, so it's just kind of... I'm going to try to uh, see if once it cools off, you know, if it'll come back to life. It's been struggling all summer. Yeah. Well, you probably wonder what I do with the Swiss chard. I usually like it steamed and the stems you just chop them small and you can steam those too or saute them with a little um, tomatoes and onions yeah so I like those cooked I'm going on down the line here I watered everything but I didn't water the roses because it's too late in the day to water them they are a little sensitive they like to get mold and fungus and rust spots and everything else and that's on a good day here's the lilies I said I was gonna dig these up but I haven't yet I hope everything's okay out there these are the collard greens we have lots of these this year I like these cooked too I like to um, boil them a little of course, I take this big stem out, and then I boil them a little, and then saute some onions, some tomatoes, and yeah, you know what to do with those. <laughs> Another rose. Yeah, they will get attention tomorrow. This little plum tree is starting to show signs of fall. More collard greens. Something is eating quiet tree. Coming on around, more collard greens. See, pot is still too hard. You can see the fig tree is starting to, uh, leaves are starting to change colors too. And here's the guava tree. We have had a couple of guavas out of the gar out of the uh, from this tree already. Quiet says when the wind blows and they fall out, that means that they're ripe. So I have some ripe here. you'll notice there is no persimmon there it is ripe and I'm having it for breakfast tomorrow <laughs> yeah I don't know if you can see that tomato there that one little tomato is starting to get ripe so yeah I'll ripe tomato soon so that little pumpkin is still doing okay really little I remember to water this tree so I don't have to put it in a bucket, get a bucket of water for it today. Oh, you know, we might have to start thinking about cutting some of these trees. They're getting close to the wires. There's the prickle pear, prickly pear. You probably notice a lot of them are gone. I've been taking them to people at church. And Quiet brought something new for us to look at. Yeah. These are drought resistant plants. And so this is what we've been looking for in the front yard. For the front yard. And somebody just gave him a bunch. So I've put them in a little bit of soil. And we'll see if they survive. The other ones we have. You know, they were from the uh, front flower bed a long time ago. He just tossed them. 
on the side of the house and they <laughs> they're still alive. I guess it doesn't take much to keep those happy. Leaves changing. <laughs> the sugar cane's always happy, isn't it? Now we're looking at the kale here. The first year we put kale in, it wasn't, was it last year? It wasn't a very popular plant. And as you can see, it's trying to recover here from the heat. Yeah. But this is good raw, and it's also good cooked. And it's kale. Yeah. See something's been eating there. Look how big that is. <laughs> the collard greens. The collard greens are happy. There's a little bit of heat damage there. I didn't eat that zucchini yet. I'm trying to see if it'll get any bigger while well, the bloom is off. So I guess, <laughs> I guess if I'm gonna have it, I probably had better have it, hadn't I? Yeah. Well, I'm working on a project inside. So I'm not gonna make a very long video today, but we will take a quick look at the uh, melons. Quiet gave me a little chore today. He said that these needed to be turned, so I turned them away from the, the yellow parts. I turned away from the sun. He said they were getting a little too much sun. So I might need to move them together and see if I can't cover them with the leaves a little bit. Give them a little more protection. Here's Pretty Kitty. She wants to show you something. What is it, Pretty Kitty? Here she comes. Sometimes I think there must be like two cats. One of them that meows a lot and one of them that's a little more quiet, but I know it's I know it's the same cat. Isn't she pretty? She enjoys being in the yard. Hey pretty kitty. Here she goes. <laughs> Hi, pretty kitty. <laughs> yeah, sometimes she's a little friendly and sometimes she's just like that. Very independent little girl. Hi, pretty kitty. Hey, baby. Well, that's all I have for today. Thanks for spending some time with me. I really enjoy our time together. <laughs> I'm standing by this guava tree. They smell, <laughs> they smell a lot. They smell very good. But anyway, uh, that's all I have for today. Bye-bye for now. Bye.